Welcome to THA Talks, for free thought and open minds. Hello, I'm Paul Obertelli and you're listening to edition 81 of THA Talks, the alternative podcast show from the UK, bringing you weekly shows and all the best interviews we can get our sticky mitts on. If you'd like to check out our full archive, just go to www.thatalks.com to listen to or to download all our free content. Our talks include news, conspiracies, spirituality, the occult, science, history, art, philosophy, religion and much more. For anyone who'd like to contact us and give us some feedback or maybe recommend a guest for the show, you can email us at info at thatalks.com. Again, that's info at thatalks.com. And don't forget, you can subscribe to the show via our RSS feed, and you can also find us on iTunes and Stitcher and many other podcast directories out there. Well, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for tuning in again. I'm delighted to be back on the show as usual. It's been getting really warm now here in England, so the, the sunshine has gen- definitely kicked in. We've just passed summer solstice, so to all the pagans out there, happy summer solstice. And to all the non-pagans out there, happy summer solstice to you. The sun is um, roaring here in the UK at the moment, and it's it's getting a little bit humid, but um, you've got to enjoy it while it's here. We've got another very interesting guest coming up today. Um, you could say it's a little bit off the wall, very much out of the box, but here at THA Talks we do like to give things a chance, no matter how wacky they may sound, you've always got to hear it out, otherwise life would just get a little bit boring, wouldn't it? So we have some good news before we crack on with this week's interview. Shana will be joining us after being out, licking her wounds in a hospital bed, which wasn't too great, she was um, a bit down in the dumps with it, but she's on the road to recovery, and I'm delighted to be able to introduce her to co-host of me in this week's show. It's time to go to a THA Bond from over the pond, Shana Collins. Hi everybody, how are you doing tonight? Yeah, we're doing very well, it's great to have you back on the show, how are you feeling? I'm I'm doing well, thank you. And I did want to take a moment to kind of um, to thank you, Paul, for the shout out at the start of the edition uh, number eighty, and to let everybody know that I appreciate anyone who lit a candle or said a prayer, sent a healing thought my way over the last couple of weeks. I do think it helped. It definitely lifted my spirits to know that I had everybody rooting for me, and I think that that has had some positive effect on my continued improvement, even though I missed out on a couple of really good interviews, so thank you. Yeah, it was um, was a shame I I didn't have you by my side with them, but um, we've got plenty coming up in the coming weeks, so, and um, you're you're sounding very healthy, so I think, um, fingers crossed, you'll stay healthy, and we'll we'll be set to go for the rest of the year. Yeah, and I'm super excited to be back this week. Um, I know that we've been waiting to have our conversation with Mark Sargent and really excited that I get to be a part of this today. So, Yeah, I mean, it was this was your first recommendation for the show. Do you want to, do you want to let the listeners know a little bit about our guest today? Yeah, definitely. Uh, Mark has actually been trending a lot on the alternative media circuit for his enclosed earth theory. Um, He grew up in Washington State and ended up living the dream by professionally playing computer games in Boulder, Colorado. Uh, For about 20 years, he did proprietary software training as a profession. And on the side, he got into a lot of conspiracy theories mostly debunking and, and kind of pulling the strings until this, these ideas fell apart. At one point, there was one left, and that was the flat earth theory. So he, he picked it up and kind of looked at it for about nine months. And the longer he looked at it, he said, the more he realized that it was not only probable, but very, very possible and likely that this theory had some merit to it. And he spent some time building... Um, a theory and an, and an argument about the flat earth and how we live in an enclosed Truman show like world, which is a little bit hard for people to understand and to wrap their heads around. But when we get a chance to talk to him, you'll see he has some really good arguments that, 
that may just change the mind. So, mm. yeah, well, it's, Very it certainly feels like it sometimes. And I think that I think one point about this this the show today is for some people out there that are rolling their eyes saying this is ridiculous, what a silly theory. I think even if you feel like that, sometimes you've just got to indulge your mind. I mean, there's there is a saying, don't open your mind too much and your brains fall out. But there's also the the opposite side of it, don't close them so you, your brain doesn't expand. You know, it's always good just to listen, even if. You never know what you learn with it. You can write things off. You can learn things. But I, I mean, I'm a great believer that the society we live in is way not really what we, it seems to be. I think we're, we're a lot more ignorant than we think and what our egos will allow us to to think, you know. So I'm looking forward to hearing what what he's got to say. I have. Yeah, definitely. Let's um, let's get a hold of Mark and, and get this started. Hi, Mark. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me very much. Uh, pleasure to be here. Well, yeah, I mean, thank you for your patience. Obviously, with um, Shana um, being ill, we had to postpone the last sh- last um, arrangement we had, but we, we're here now, so we're delighted to get it get it on the road. Um, yeah. It's quite an off-the-wall subject, this. I know I'm, I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of our listeners, they've rolled their eyes and they've gone, oh, God, <laughs> what's, what's all this about? And, and it's not the sort of thing that you'd um, say that you'd, you'd learn in high school or anything like that, but it's it's very interesting, and I've heard a lot of people on the uh, on the street sort of talking about it and are very intrigued with it could you could you give us a rundown of how you got how you got interested in the subject and to just sort of start us off with it what what, what inspired you to get into it all sure I, I started out trying to debunk it I had looked at just about every conspiracy it started last summer uh, 2014 middle of the summer I had gone through you know just about every garden variety conspiracy you could think of and this thing had crossed my desk more times than I could count and I just looked at it like everyone was probably listening saying, this is ridiculous. This is silly. And I knew there was something strange about it because I actually, the first time I clicked on it, I actually got physically embarrassed. I actually got flushed because, and, and you're, you're talking to a guy that's looked into lizard people and every mm-hmm. secret society and every, everything you could ever think of. And I'm clicking on this and I'm going, why am I embarrassed to click on this? This doesn't even make sense. And once I started digging into it, you know, I spent about uh, about nine months debunking it, you know, trying trying to tear it apart, basically trying to prove the globe, mm. basically trying to prove it's like, okay, we live on where they tell us that we live, where NASA tells us and, and all the space agencies that we live on a spinning ball that's flying through space. And the more I dug into it, the more I realized that there was something very, very wrong. It turned into a Pandora's box where the more threads I pulled on, the more things opened up and... To the point where what happened was in February, I just gave up. I physically gave up. I woke up in the middle of the night, uh, the second week of February this year, and had the narrative in my head for the whole thing. I, I just said, you know what? I've got it. I've got all the. I've got the clues pretty much right there. And and day after day, because it took about a day to do each clue from mm-hmm. from from bare bones to to finished thing on YouTube, and I made the intro and the first seven clues in eight days. Just, you know, bam, 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 bam. And really didn't think much of it because I turned off, uh, I you know, I did everything not to make it popular on YouTube. I didn't monetize it. I didn't allow ratings. I didn't allow comments. I didn't think it was going to get any traction. And then almost immediately I had people calling me and uh, the interviews started coming in. And what was really great about it was not only were people starting to do their own videos on the topic, but the, all the interviewers that were, that were talking to me, they, you know, nobody could debunk it. So here we are June and uh, nobody shot this thing down. And mm. it's amazing because the, the internet hive mind, in my opinion, misses nothing. Okay. Well, well you've got a website in closed world. So our listeners can always check out <laughs> that website to find out the details of, of your, yeah. of this theory, but could you give us a rundown yeah. of, so, so what is the, the general theory the, and what, the, what is the it? General- the general theory is that we it's very possible that we live inside, if anyone's seen the Truman Show, because that's the easiest one to swallow, mm. is it possible that we live in a Truman Show? That's, you know, the Truman Show was only about 20 miles wide in the movie, and if you expanded it out to a few thousand miles wide, could you, because, you know, in the movie, you only had to fool one person, could you fool an entire civilization, and how long could you keep that going? And my, you know, from the research that I did and, and all the stuff that I, that I read up on and watched what the governments did, especially since 1956, I think it was, it's possible to have done it. 
and that our governments, not only our governments, but uh, you know, the United States and Russia were the first people to find it in 1956, and I think it's been a, it kept a secret ever since. I think we've we've known about it for the last 60 years, and they've been doing everything they can to keep it from the public, including the creation of NASA, uh, the Antarctic Treaty, uh, just all these little things that just keep pointing back to the same concept, which is the world is not what you think it is. So, so the world's the world is flat, and how comes we're not going off the edge of it? I mean, that's the main question, isn't it? Why haven't we fallen off the edge? Well, yeah, the old yeah, the old <laughs> story from hundreds and hundreds of years ago uh, yeah. that it if it is tabletop flat, and there is a there is a bunch of disputes in the flat Earth community, believe it or not, uh, mm. which we you know is it tabletop flat or is it enclosed or is it um is are there warps in it? And the reason why you would never fall off the edge is because if it is if it is enclosed, if it is a flattish system, then Antarctica is not what you think it is. Antarctica isn't just a continent that looks kind of like Australia, but with snow on it. Mm. It is actually stretched around the entire edge of a circular map, and it forms a, what what appears to be a giant ice barrier that starts out, you know, with two hundred foot high cliffs, and then ramps up to ten thousand feet, which is you know roughly two miles, plateaus at two miles. And just keeps going for a long, long stretch with no animal life, no plant life. It's the perfect barrier that nobody wants to go to. And again, it's again, you want coincidences. The the fact that Antarctica was sealed off in 1959 by the Antarctic Treaty, which says that no corporation anywhere in the world, no matter how much money, you know, matter how 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 much they lobby. They, they they can't even talk about it. No corporation is allowed into Antarctica, and they haven't been ever since it was uh, ever since it was explored. Ever since the the big um, United States mission, uh, Operation Deep Freeze in 1956. Mm, so, but that's why that's why nothing falls off the edge because you can't. the yeah. The water is held in by a giant barrier, uh, an ice continent. Okay, and then so um, I'm kind of thinking of trying to throw throw things in it. What about the I mean, people that have flown in. Con- remember when Concords were were about, and you could, you, when mm-hmm. you were so high up, you could actually see, look out the window, and you can see the globe of the Earth. Um, uh, how, how would that the, be explained? The curvature of the Earth. Yeah, Excellent. Yeah. Question. People will mention that all the time, and uh, you can go on YouTube and and check out the videos. Not not just from planes, because people take videos out of planes all the time, but look at the weather balloons that have been uh, gone up since uh, you know the last few years. Especially compare like the the Red Bull one, which got a lot of media attention uh, mm-hmm. just this year, which showed you know with a fisheye lens a, a severe over exaggerated curve of the Earth versus the dog cam video, and I think that might have been even a, I don't know if that was a UK one or not. Mm-hmm. Uh, the dog cam weather balloon that went up which showed nothing no no curve at all it was perfectly flat and it was within 10,000 feet of the the Red Bull altitude you know one was about 110,000 feet the Red Bull was 120,000 feet bottom line if people are taking a picture out outside their uh, um, airplane window and they think they see a curve fine take that picture put it on your on your PC whatever it is your laptop and then take a ruler or a piece of paper and show me where the curve is because it's mm-hmm. not there uh, you you want to see the curve. Believe me when I tell you this. This is the the greatest conditioning of all time. It's it's the greatest con of all time. And what I mean by that is, we are conditioned since grade school, and I, I don't know what you, what you call it over there, but it, you put a globe in the classroom when you're six years old, and that's all you have to do. You don't even have to talk about it. You just leave it there. And by the time you get out of school, even without college. You are conditioned to, you know, that is where you live and, and we equate it with things that are absolutely obvious. We know that fire burns, water is wet, you drop a pencil, it will fall because of gravity. But we also equate the earth, the shape of the earth with these things, even though nobody, the, there's a, a very, very small group of people that can prove it. And the, the biggest one is NASA. Mm. Yeah, I mean, well, I've, I've, I'm very skeptical, skeptical about NASA myself because it's it, it does seem to be very secretive sometimes I'll, I'll i'll say that i mean um what about the planets i mean we we can look up we can look up at the sky we can see the stars we can see the moon the sun they look circular they, they look round i mean are they not there or, or are they are they, they genuine they're there but they're not what we think they are not by any stretch uh in in any flat earth model or enclosed system model and in fact my model uh the sun is not 92 million miles away uh, the earth is, or the moon is not 237,000 miles away uh the stars and the planets but they're broken for me they're broken up into two sections and that is 
in an enclosed system like the one I'm proposing, you know, Truman Show, it is a giant planetarium uh, that we are born into, and why would we ever doubt it? So the stars and the planets are just a gorgeously rendered image, probably the best planetarium that's ever been devised ever. I mean, we can do this sort of thing on a smaller scale. Mm -hmm. The sun and the moon are a little tougher because you don't necessarily want to make them part of the backdrop because they, uh, they're, they're way larger in the sky and they do a lot more things. So you basically make the sun in a, in a system like this not very wide at all, less than 100 miles wide, same with the moon. Make the sun its own light source, you know, like a giant light bulb, like a terrarium uh, light bulb or a cage light bulb and the moon a giant night light. Uh, because, you know, the moon is the most photographed object of all time. The sun, you know, is the most adored object of all time. So you'd want to put a little more care into the, yeah. into the design of that. And I take it you don't think we went to the moon then? <laughs> oh, my God. No, I'll, I'll take it one further. And, and I know that this, this is part of the, the, the problem when people are trying to grasp this concept, because, especially in the conspiracy world, because the conspiracy world, the Apollo landings from the United States standpoint – have been so dismantled ever since the internet, you know, really got online that, you know, that a lot of most conspiracy people say, no, we don't believe we went to the moon. But when you say, okay, what about the ISS? What about satellites? What about these things that, you know, especially the ISS, cause it's the same group. It's like, okay, mm -hmm. can you trust one thing? And, you know, can you dismiss one thing, but hold on to, to another thing? You know, can you, can you say that the Apollo thing didn't happen, but still held on to the ISS? Because look, if you're going to lie about one thing, they're going to lie about another. I'll, I'll take it one for it. Cause you're out in what, London? Right London, now? London, yeah, yeah. Yeah, perfect. Uh, ask yourself this. With all the other space programs that have happened around the world, you know, ru you know, Russia and America were the first one. Japan had the mm. JAXA program. China, why didn't England ever get tied into this? Why didn't England ever get dragged into this? And I know why. And that was because they were smarter than just about everybody else. They, When this thing goes down, they're going to look like princes by comparison. Because I think when they looked at it, and look, I'll, I'll even look at the, um, uh, what was it, Diamonds Are Forever, James Bond, 1971, oh, yeah. 1972, where, where, he's being, where he's running across an American soundstage and they're faking the moon mission. And the, the astronauts can't catch them because they're running in slow motion. They're still in character. I think England stayed out of the space program because... They there was there was too much pride, too much dignity. Where they said, you know what, we're not even going to touch this. Mm. With it, you want to waste your money throwing rockets into space? You can go do it all all day long. And uh, you know they they have the tech, they've got the willpower to do it. Never touched it. I love that. Mm. Okay, well, so who, we come down to the big question now. Then is it is it a natural construct? Is it is that what you're saying, or or are we some in in some kind of zoo? Um, well, project. <laughs> Like that the Truman Show, you know. Yeah, that depends on. I, I'm trying to take the more benevolent, non sinister approach because lots of people have mentioned, you know, Prison Planet, mm. The Matrix. You know, are we an experiment? Are we a petri dish? Are we a snow globe on somebody's desk? I would like to say, but but no matter what they mention, everybody says it's artificial. No question, it's not a natural process. This we are in a mechanism. We are in a giant, beautiful terrarium, in my opinion. If anyone has any doubt of that, you know, you know, because just look at how it was built. The first thing it was, what you know, the systems were designed. Everything that was put in place in a system like this was designed to slow our system down to where we didn't, we couldn't explore very fast, and there were a lot of uh, very subtle negative reinforcement barriers put in, you know, like, like increasing the cold temperature out to where you got to Antarctica. And even if you got out there, you're not going to live there. There's no plant or animal life to speak of. Um, altitudes, you know, we live in a very, very narrow band of altitude. You know, 95% of the population lives from sea level to 5,000 feet. Uh, everything that, and, but the rest of the planet is very, very beautiful. And the, the edges have been hidden from us entirely. We don't know it. That's the great, the, the great con here. This is the great magic trick. We don't know. That's why we act naturally and we don't, we don't ever question. And the, and the big reason for that is, and I talked about this in one of the clues, was if we knew there was a fence, every other life form on this planet could care less. It's mm. like they'd notice it. They'd notice there was a barrier, but it wouldn't uh, obsess them. We would dwell on it. All we would, we would dedicate our lives 
to f- trying to figure out, you know, we uh, new religions would pop up. All we would do is is just throw everything we had at trying to figure out who built this place and why. And again, whoever built this place and why does not want us to do that. They want us to just go about our lives and our daily business for whatever reason. So do I think it's sinister? No. Uh, do you know, do I think we're, we're being trapped and tortured? I mean, yeah, there's a lot of suffering in the world, but the most of it seems to be what we do to each other. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. One, one, one thing I suppose one, a lot of our listeners will be thinking is the, is the scale of it. I mean, so let's, let's look at NASA. Yeah. Um, and a lot of people at NASA have got projects putting satellites up there, um, you know, creating these satellites so the technology works so it can do do whatever it needs to do in space. I mean, mm-hmm. do you think that it, that would would these people that work at NASA would they have to be lying for all this to 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 work, or are they tricked as well? You know, it, it's kind most of, of opens a can of worms, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, well, most of them don't, and uh, I'll give you a couple examples from a high level standpoint. People. It, you know, because the NASA is a, a wing of the United States military. You know, people think it's its own entity. It is not. It is the United States military. It's built on military technology. Mm. At If you compartmentalize something well enough, and that's what the military does, most people don't have to be in the loop. You can you can have people that build satellites all day long. You don't have to tell them. Uh, the people that are in the control rooms, you don't have to tell them. You can just send, uh, you know, fake telemetry data. The people that send, that create that telemetry data, yes, they have to know. But that's mm. a very, very small group people i'll give you an example uh one of my neighbors uh who moved recently um i'm out, I'm out here in colorado he was career nasa his name was wayne ottinger and he was the engineer the guy when it came to building a lot of the astronaut stuff for uh, gemini and mercury and the apollo programs and his walls were just bristling with plaques he was career jpl and 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 he was absolutely you know as as far, hard, high up as you could go for for a nasa engineer he knew nothing he absolutely knew nothing. Mm. And that's because why would you tell the garage mechanic? As a matter of fact, I'll, I'll throw it the other way. It's like, who do you tell in this? Uh, the people that are like, even, even the people that are faking the interior footage of the ISS, you don't have to tell them. They're Air Force employees. You just make them sign the standard non-disclosure agreement saying, look, you don't have clearance. You, now, they will know that they're faking something, mm. you know, because obviously their footage is being used as the real thing. Same thing with the underwater footage that uh, in the simulators that's being passed off as the real thing. But you don't have to tell them why it's happening. Just, you know, it's just like, look, you're, you're, we're, we're paying you to basically not ask questions. So don't do it. But that, the contrast to that is the Apollo astronauts, you know, back in the early days, I think they told them. And those guys, and there's, there's the reason why you don't tell people like that anymore, because they ended up being uh, train wrecks. They, you know, they became recluses. They crawled into a bottle and, and uh, they led very unhappy lives. Mm. Okay. So, well, um, Shana, um, what are you making of all this? It's, it's interesting stuff, isn't it? It's definitely interesting, especially with some of the different things that are coming out in the media right now. Mm. Um, everything from specifically, I wanted to ask about uh, the weather patterns and climate change and how how we would be able to have the technology to manipulate that within the enclosed earth theory as as such you would also be able to use that as i would say a distraction method for people to not pay attention to the idea that you know pay no attention to the man behind the curtain but look at what he's doing yeah kind of thing so what would your the the weather systems it's really really interesting because in in a system like this especially if it's enclosed you would have a lot of automated processes, you know, from the uh, the jet stream, which was which would be part of the system, the underwater conveyor system, the magma system. But it seems that our technology, especially in the last, say, 20 years or so, we have developed a, the ability to alter. And I'm, I'm just going to pick on HARP here because it's an American system and everybody's been suspicious <laughs> of it since it was created. But it's like, look, we seem to be able to control things or alter things on a on a local level, but that has some sort of blowback. And that is if you if you mess with an artificial system that has all sorts of complex algorithms that are going on in it, and you say, okay, create a hurricane here, put a typhoon here, b- make a lot of rainfall here, the system is going to try to compensate. And I believe that the climate change and all the weird, weird patterns that we've been running into recently has been partially due to a backlash of the automated system fighting with what we have been messing with naturally. 
And of course, you know, we're not going to tell the public that, you know, it's like, you know, any, any experimental program, especially with weather mo modification, we're not going to say that. But I do think it's, it's tied to it, which is why, you know, they're, they're saying that climate change, you know, everything in media, in the mainstream, you got a question and the, the climate change, the thing is happening. I think it's a cover for, it's like, oh yeah, by the way, <laughs> that's, that's a side effect of when we do something on a regional level. Makes sense. Would you say that because you have experience as a proprietary software engineer um, as part of your, your experience mm -hmm. in Colorado, yep. would that color some of your perspective on how you created the enclosed earth theory, just being able to, to work with um, video games and some of the AI elements that have they've come across over the last 20 years? Yeah, yeah, that's an excellent question. And and that's exactly how I went looking at this thing. Because once I started digging into it, I realized from a design standpoint, because I, I was trying to figure out if I had to build this thing. And, and that's when I got into Clue 6. Uh, um, I was talking about how the system, w how how it was designed from, an, from a top-down view. And it was flawless. The design uh, again, not not just the negative reinforcements, but the little subtle things like putting a three percent salt salt solution in the in the oceans that limits that restricts uh, ocean you know, older ocean uh, travel as far as discoveries and explorations by ninety five percent at least because you can't drink what you're sailing on. Uh, that was brilliant. Uh, lumping all the continents at the center. Uh, it, and, and it looked to me also, when, when I was looking at this, that we've gone through different versions. We're not the first occupants in this, in this apartment by any stretch. Uh, there are there have been previous versions. For anyone who has any doubt of that, uh, look at the old Pangaea supercontinent model, where you know they people say, "Well, wasn't it a point where all the continents were lumped together?" Yeah, they absolutely were lumped together. But in an enclosed flat system, that makes way more sense because you just put them at the center, and then you can kind of break them apart as you get going. But if it's on a globe, it throws everything off because it doesn't make any sense. You have a big lumpy continent, and then the rest is just water, and then what? It just kind of spreads out like that. Nah. Uh, not buying it. So yeah, from a design standpoint, every system that I looked at worked better in a flat and closed system uh, than it did on a globe. And that means everything from, from uh, the jet stream to the underwater conveyors to the magma systems, uh, everything worked better. And that was that was something too the generational element that I believe you went into one of the um, flat earth clues wherein if you look at um, the forgetting of a, a certain genetic awareness for people. Mm -hmm. You go through thousands and thousands of years and even the, the five um, religions, major yeah. religions that you go into have views and perspectives, especially I would say the Native American culture has a lot of stories about we're in what this fifth or sixth version yeah. or run through of, of humanity. So yeah. for every time that happens, you lose a little bit more of the story. So would yeah. that be... Could you then assume that that first generation was aware or certain people of that first generation were aware they kind of signed the non-disclosure agreement with the architects and it, it trickled down from there to the point that we were are completely oblivious at this point? Yeah, yeah. And that was another excellent question. You get some good ones. I don't know if you've write, wrote these down ahead of time, but these are good. The... Uh, there's been a lot of questions posed to me. At least half of the people that email me email me from a, a religious standpoint, and just and all faiths have have contacted me. And and by that I you know the big five: uh, Buddhism, uh, Hinduism, Judaism, uh, Islam, and Christianity. And they've all got their different take on this. But the question comes up more often than than I would have thought, and that is who were the who? What was version 1.0? Who were they? And were they in on it? And I think they were at one point where, you know, and, and I put, touched on the, the, the Christian Tower of Babel story. And I didn't mention it by name, of mm -hmm. course, but there was that thing. And that is if you had a unified civilization and they found out it again, this is this comes to the core of, of why, why you would have to keep it, it, it hidden from the civilization. And that is if you had a civilization that knew and had much, didn't have much division, if they were a unified group, what would they do if they found out? And it's like, well, well, if they had advanced enough technology, they'd probably try to get out or at least try to alter the structure or go to meet their maker or builder or creator or whatever you want to call this. 
And that was fascinating to me. That and, of course, you know, what you were talking about, the lost knowledge, where we seem to go through these big gaps where we have to rediscover everything. Our, our civilization, our history, unbroken, only goes back 5,000 years. That is not a long time. But in those 5,000 years, I also find it very interesting that the first 4,500 years, the majority of Every government, every tribe, every culture, every religion all believed in the same thing. And that was we were living on a flattish structure, which was enclosed by some sort of physical barrier. Uh, the Christians called it a firmament. The other religions had their own terms for it. You know, the vault of the sky, uh, that, that we were in the back of something. You know, it was all that we were in. We were in one giant community, and that didn't change until 500 years ago. And, uh, and that's when, you know, it, it became a globe. And I think it bought the powers that be and the creators, I think, even let it happen uh, another 500 years until we've got to this point now where, for whatever reason, in 2015, this, this is the debatable topic and it's getting a ton of traction. Now, before I throw this back to our resident pig, because I'm sure that he's going to want to add some of his views on there as well. I wanted to ask, um, you had mentioned also that it's something like eight years of nuclear experiments happened on a regular basis where once Admiral Byrd had gone to Antarctica a couple yeah. of times and, and had the interview where he discussed how in Antarctica we had all of these amazing core deposits of coal and uranium and all of these different things, and then everything just stopped. Yeah. Um, at that point, the the nuclear um, experiments happened where they were just shooting rockets and cannons and things. Yep. And now we actually have um, what's been getting a lot of attention is the space junk and how in a couple of years it's going to be impossible for people to go out to space regardless of, you know, if they could or not because That's of the amount of space junk. That's convenient, isn't it? There. Yeah. 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 Um, do you think that it's, it, and last question here before I throw it back to Paul, but it, is it possible that that we can see through the enclosure going back to some of the, um, the, the different elements, the planetary elements, things that, that we see, is it possible that it's more of like a two-way mirror structure in that technology that was, that is creating the enclosure? You mean uh, the enclosure itself? Can can we are can we see outside of it, or people can see inside of it, or are... yeah, both? Is it possible that that at a certain point, either we were able to see through it, or that obviously we're we're under some sort of surveillance? Maybe, or else, well, why would they create it? Absolutely, absolutely. We are we are under constant surveillance, and that is part of. When I was digging into the end part of the clues, which is like, look, when, if, if and when, and I firmly believe it will be a when, when this thing comes out and there is a risk of, you know, uh, you know we don't know what the builders will do when, when this happens, because if too many people find out, then, you know, they've got to make a decision. But yeah, if you are being watched, and I do think we're being watched, then, and you know you're being watched absolutely for a fact, then you become more accountable. And now, do we, do I think we had the ability to look outside it ever? Eh, maybe the first version people did, you know, version 1.0, but that didn't end as well as they had hoped. So, uh, yeah, it's I, I know I absolutely know for a fact that, that we're that we're being tracked on the inside of this thing. You wouldn't build a structure as as advanced this as and as well as this thing has been. I mean, it, it is perfect, it, you know, or the closest thing to perfect I could ever think of. And if you wouldn't build it that well without having the ability to monitor everybody and everything inside it, it's just, it's not an open system. If that's what you're asking, I think you are. So you're saying that it's not so much like the Sims on autopilot as it is that there, there is somebody kind of watching and checking the boxes in a scientific. I would hope so because (laughs) people, people have asked me and it's like, what what would you compare this to? And I, and at one point I said, you know, it was kind of like a, you know, we, maybe we're just a box of kittens where, you know, we're, we're being taken care of, but at the same time I was going, no, that's not, that's not the best analogy. I think we're more like a box of baby scorpions. And that is 
we're, we're kind of cute, you know, kind of cuddly, you know, but you do not want us one. You don't want to be reaching your hand in there. And two, you do not want us getting out because, and people have said, well, you know, why does there have to be a dome? And it's like, are you kidding? Have you seen what, what we do on a regular basis? We've been touching on this in, in, since in the movies, since the fifties, you know, we're, we're dangerous right now. We maybe will evolve, but uh, it's going to take a big consciousness uptick before before they're going to let us start running around on our own yeah i think the human element is still in in its own very self-destructive toddler phase so i wouldn't want i mean i wouldn't want us loose on on the rest of the universe myself but that's and 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 not to pander to you but but i've said this in other interviews and, and that is look women women have it way you know they are way better handling this sort of thing than men it's the it's the men that are the big problem you don't see women you know starting wars and and committing you know atrocities you know to that degree so i'm still going to put most of the blame on the men sorry (laughs) sorry men who are listening (laughs) i'm okay with that but i I would like to hear what paul are you uh you still with us there yeah i'm I'm, I'm taking it all in taking it all in there was there's (laughs) a a couple of the points that i've that's kind of just sticking in my head um Mm -hmm. Well, the first one is, I mean, with regards to the North and South Poles being sort of these great big walls, that's very interesting and kind of, yeah, make, makes you think of it. But then the thing that gets me is the the equator where we've got the line. I mean, I don't know if, has anyone ever travelled through the equator and gone around? Because obviously that's the test to go from that centre of the equator and walk all the way around and come back to the same point again. Have oh, you got you a theory can- against that or...? Oh no no no! You can you can sail. You know the you know talk about I think Galileo or, or the others. Uh, the um, you can sail around the world, but you're just making uh, one big circle on yeah. a, on a flat map. You're not going to be able to tell the difference. You know the the distances are so vast, especially in the old days, yeah. uh, where you know you just you either make a a big left hand turn or a big right hand turn, but but you'd never ever know it. But once GPS was put into place in the nineties. All that went out the window because remember the GPS system, again, stands for Global Positioning System, was designed by the United States military. And I have no doubt that one of the primary reasons for the even creation of the GPS system, which of course has a massive, massive gap in coverage in the Southern Hemisphere, which it shouldn't if it's a globe, uh, the GPS system was designed to help protect this thing. You know, there's mm. been a lot of money spent on a lot of different areas. And I know the United States is, is primary. The Russia would be secondary on this to, you know, a lot of money has been spent to keep this thing a secret from us. Mm, yeah, that's an interesting answer. And then there's also the hollow earth theories. Have you looked into that side of stuff? Does that complement it? Yeah, yeah. And I don't hate the hollow earth theory at mm. all because mostly because the same guy that is tied to this theory, the big guy, is tied to the hollow earth theory. And that was Admiral Richard Byrd, the uh, youngest United States admiral in the history of our Navy and our greatest living explorer, at least over the United States. And he discovered the, the he did the North Pole expedition in 1926. And supposedly his secret diaries talked about that there was a hollow earth, you know, entrance up at the North Pole, you know, that the, in, in a flat map, it'd just be the center, you know, it'd be a hole in the center, not very big. And that he flew into it. And there was another, you know, like a journey to the center of the earth type of thing where there's another civilization and tropical stuff. Uh, no, it doesn't conflict with my model at all. It just makes it a little smaller. So you don't have this giant hollow sphere. It's just a hollow, you know, big cavey area. But again, what was more interesting for me was that, even though he did the the North Pole in 1926, he spent the rest of his life all the way up until his death in 1957 down at the down at the in Antarctica. You know, mission after mission, like he was looking for something, and that's where what uh, Shauna was saying. Uh, it it got really really weird because he was looking for. He just went a major expedition after a major expedition until 1954, where it looked like they just gave up. Where they were like, okay, maybe maybe the old maps, the ancient maps, the secret maps are wrong. And he goes on on national television over here in the States and he says, Look, the the Antarctica is made out of money. Let's let's carve this thing up. And all the countries are going, Yeah, let's do that. And then he goes down for one more expedition and then the world changed. And nobody talks about it. It, everything changed. Everyone left the ice like their lives depended on it. A treaty was put in place. There's, there's literally, you can look this up. It's called the Antarctic Defense Force, mm. manned by multiple nations, 
top of the line military equipment. You aren't allowed. There's only like 5,000 people technically on the entire continent down there. It's all military and science. Um, all corporations were banned for it. it from it, it, it goes against everything that we are as a, and you can say what you want about different countries, but we are a capitalistic civilization. It goes against everything that we are. We do everything based on money and greed and power. Yeah. What, what, what conspiracy is bigger than money? I'd like to see someone top this one. Because that that's, was the big one. And then, of course, you know, the, the creation of NASA in 1958 and sealing off. And the fact, uh, I'll, I'll throw one more. I know I, I don't want to ramble too much here. That's okay. But the fact that if you believe in coincidences, and I don't, mm. the fact that the Valen re radiation belts were announced by NASA in 1959, the same year you seal off Antarctica. If it was one of those two things, I might have let it pass. But from a design standpoint, you're sealing off the outer edge and the upper edge at the same time. That is structure. There is there is nothing else that that, that could be for me. It's like, again, if you just did the outer edge and maybe several years later, but no. It, and and the fact that NASA was the one that, ones that announced it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, but anyway, that's my rant. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 I certainly think one, one thing that we can definitely take from all this is, is I think that when we think about where we're, where we're all living, Sometimes we 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 th I think I think we think we're freer than we are in, in terms of society. For example, you you can't you can't create something that can fly and just jump in it and fly it in the sky. You'd have to get a license. You'd have to do this or do that. You mm -hmm. you can't get a you can't get a cart and drive. You know, there's so there, we we are quite restricted. It's obviously, there's so much space around us, and we're so busy with our jobs, and we're so busy doing this and d busy doing that. <coughs> Excuse mm -hmm. me, that. We, we think we're free, like it's free for us to have a weekend where we can just go to the bar and have a few drinks and maybe go by the seaside and that gives us a sense of freedom. But in regards to exploring the world freely and whenever we want, we're very, we're not very free at all. I mean, particularly with with a lot of the, 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 the problems with security and, and so on with wars around the world and stuff. So I think it's... It's uh, very thought provoking. I mean, the whole, the whole yeah. concept you, you, that you're coming up with here. I mean, it's... Um, one one of the things I mean, this is getting quite kind of deep into it. Is the I mean, do you mm -hmm. believe that we're still surrounded by space? For example, like this flat, this 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 globe that we're in. Where is it sitting? Where is it? I get that question every week, mm. <laughs> literally every week. And what I try to tell people is this: if you are faking space, th yes, th could there be space outside here? Yeah, yeah, sure. Why not? Mm. But you don't have to have space. If you're faking it, as a matter of fact, if you're faking space, if it's a giant, pla giant planetarium, you're probably faking space because there really isn't space outside. Mm -hmm. It's probably something much, much different. Uh, could it be just blackness? You know, could it be, you know, could we be underwater? I'll throw the, I, I you know, I don't want to quote too many uh, biblical references, but the, the Genesis thing, you know, the firmament that separates the waters above from the waters below. Uh, could we be in a giant room with more of these, which other people have, have, have expressed other flat earthers? And I totally dig that. It's like, because you're not going to build just one of this. There's going to be more. And the question is, are they right next to us like an egg crate? Or, you know, are they spaced out to where there's there's a distance where we can't naturally travel from one to the other w without help? Uh, very, very possible. Um, but for me, it, it would come down to efficiency. And that is, I would put them, if I was going to build them, I'd put them really close to each other and then make them, you know, put a barrier so that, you know, you couldn't travel from one place to the other, even though there might be spaceships that actually do that. But, uh, but yeah, mm -hmm. so to answer, answer your question, yes, there could be space, but if it was me... I wouldn't do it. I, you, there's no need. There's no need to make space. You can, if you can fake it with, and make make sure that 99.99 percent of the population buys it, pfft, yeah, that's all you have to do. There's one. For, I've just been trying on on my computer trying to find. There was one f a movie that I saw quite a while ago, and it, it reminds me a little bit. Like, it, was it White City or, or something? It was Dark Dark City. Dark City. That's right. That Dark, yep. dark City. Yeah. Dark Dark City. That's oh, quite ahead. interesting. That's quite interesting because it's kind of. I mean, I was just going to say whoever created that movie. Um, maybe they know something, you know. Maybe you know. There's been some weird predictive programming over the last 15 years, and and people got to understand that predictive programming doesn't happen. Yeah, there's some short-term stuff, but there's mm. a lot. This is this is big enough to where you can start talking about this decades in advance. Um, look at Dark City, which mm. was 1998, because yeah. uh, I, I know this. That was an Australian film that, uh, or New Zealand film that uh, actually the Matrix used some of the same sets. Yeah, I thought it was brilliant. Movie. I thought I really enjoyed yeah. it. Really oh, it was thought provoking. Great. 
great movie. Yeah. Uh, an enclosed system floating around in space on a much smaller scale. So mm-hmm. it was just one city, but it was domed with an invisible force field. Um, they uh, a very similar city to that was done in the 2014 movie The Signal. Mm-hmm. where you didn't find out to the very end. Uh, spoilers for anyone who was watching that. It's a decent movie. The last 20 minutes are great. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, the Truman Show, 1998 as well. Truman uh, Show, yeah. uh, the, Under the Dome, which just got picked up for another season based on a Stephen King book. Uh, that's an American television series where it's a, it's a, it's a small town in middle America that is enclosed by a physical glass impenetrable dome. Uh, the Simpsons movie, uh, we'll throw some animation in there, uh, you know, where the entire city was enclosed, Springfield is enclosed by a giant dome. Uh, these little things, they, they are no accidents. I believe that, that because this thing was so big, there was a contingency plan put in place where they said, you know what? We're not going to be able to hide this thing forever. It's like hiding something from your roommates. You can you can hide you can move stuff around every once in a while, use some sleight of hand here and there, but you can't hide this forever. Especially when the technology gets to the point. I mean, thank God, like what you're saying, you know, where we're restricted in travel. Thank God we don't have flying cars mm. because that and that's the reason we don't. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. never ever going to happen because they would be over within a day. Yeah. Um, you know, Nat, the fact that uh, you have to, if you're going to even think about space travel. All the all the major space programs all over the world they all go through NASA. NASA is the one that gives them the blueprints and on how to do stuff. The, you know the the fact there's only two private space companies, and you know one's Virgin Galactic, the other SpaceX, and they just wrecked today. So there's another there's another setback. Yeah. Okay. Well, we, we're sort of just pressing towards that time now. So before I get give uh, Sharon a chance to to come back in and say something again, sure. I'd just like to uh, I'd just like to find out really where do you want to be? Where do you want to take all this i mean um, would you like to really um dig in and try and find the truth i mean say for in a year year or so's time where would you like to see yourself what, what would you like to be doing with this with this info oh yeah yeah at this point um you know i i got my own show my own my own little radio show they threw at me right after uh, my second interview on the on that particular network uh called strange world and, uh, and i'm really trying to promote everybody to not only ask questions, you know, and, and get the debunkers out there. That's the part that's great is because the more people that, that look into this and I love watching it happen. And, and you can see this on YouTube all, all day long where people will say they'll make a video because they're so outraged. They'll say, this is ridiculous. This is the silliest thing I've ever heard. And they'll do that for like four or five videos. It's like, this is stupid. This is stupid. This is stupid. And by the time they get like the fifth or sixth video, all of a sudden they've turned the corner and they say, you know what? It's not stupid anymore. That's super fun. As far as personal goals for me, my personal goal, it will not only to tell people as much as I can, you know, and and get the word out there, but my personal goal is is to bring NASA down entirely. Uh, to, to get them to way, where there's so many questions coming from so many angles that I know they can't answer. I mean, I've got four or five points on them that they cannot debunk. I'm, I'm waiting for Neil deGrasse Tyson at this point, you know, yeah. to, you know, but once I get, once they have enough questions, they're going to have to address it sooner or later. Either they're going to have to address it or what I figure is going to happen is the United States government is going to stage some event that's so big that it'll distract from any other topic, no matter how how ridiculous it sounds yeah i mean i i think anything that's pay uh, that's funded by taxpayers money i think it should be really transparent and i i don't quite get that impression with nasa i really don't but um shana um have you got anything you'd like to throw in um at this point i would just say you know make sure that mark gives us a heads up about the the website and if there's any other way that he can be contacted um, any plans for new videos to go into maybe the next step about okay people have accepted or at least are capable of wrapping their heads around the idea of the enclosed earth what's the next step got it um first thing is uh yeah the website which i had to build because again i didn't think this thing was going to get traction ever in a million years uh enclosedworld.com that that's doing really well. And that's, you know, just a repository for all the videos, all the interviews, um, all the transcripts. If anyone wants to translate it in other languages, which has been fun to watch. Um, as far as the, the further clues, I, yeah, I do have a couple more up my, up my sleeve. Uh, I put out as, as the amount that I put out as quickly as I did, I'm trying to still let everything, you know, the dust settle and let things disperse. Cause you know, the majority of the people still don't know. They still see it. It's like, you know, that it's still a, a, an unbelievable topic, but 
uh, Clue 12, which is called Real Eyes, uh, R-E-A-L space E-Y-E-S, it covered, It goes into the fact that we not only are in an enclosed system, but we seem to be genetically designed to believe illusions, which is a, a fascinating little thing. And then 13, that's a secret. I'm not telling anybody what 13 is going to be. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm holding on to them. I want to get the same feeling I did before when I was doing the first ones. I want to wake up in the middle of the night with just, you know, so this buzzing in my head, which is what happened before and, and just put it out there. But up for now, I'm, I'm just doing as many interviews as I can and helping other people. Cause people say, you know, what, what should, what topics should I go on? I go, you know what? run with this or run with this. And I'll, we're, I'm just brainstorming with other people. And at this point I cannot keep track. There's been like, what, what are we up to? Like 23,000 videos. I mean, a lot of them are mirrors on, on YouTube since this year, which is under, it was like a 600, 700% increase in this topic just since the beginning, just since February. So I'm, I'm just playing catch up now. So, so is the, is the topic of the architects or the, or the authority as you've put it before mm-hmm. and the people that are or had originally created the concept for the enclosed earth set something that yeah. you think that um, you would get into or is that more of the esoteric I, element? I don't, I don't even really have to get into it because there are people that are way better at it than me. Uh, I'll give a perfect example. Um, Rob Skiba who interviewed me and was initially a skeptic uh, for True Frequency Radio, he went off after it, you know, because this, what it, what it happens, what happens is this will stick in your head for a while. It starts rattling around and eventually, like in his case, he, he was a very, uh, very, very strong Christian. And so he started going down the biblical path and he's done, oh God, 12 hours of, of different stuff that's, that's been put out there, literally going chapter and verse on everything. So that's a whole nother sect. And I'm just letting, the, they, they, they want to run with it. Hey, fine. That's, for, that's fantastic. I don't have to do anything there uh, because that, that, that side of it's already got a life of its own. They, they don't need any convincing at that. You know, I just gave them the, the smallest of nudges. And I mean, I know the, the clue 11 was, um, I'm sorry, clue uh, 10 was called hiding God, but I didn't think it would nearly get the, uh, that sort of response. So yeah, that one's, that one's running on its own. Every once in a while people will send me stuff, but uh, no, it's, that's, that's, that's a train that's running on a, on a completely different track. That's fantastic. I thank you so much for taking the time and, and doing oh, the yeah. show with us today, Mark. Um, I think this is an awesome concept that <sighs> will really kind of break people's heads wide open, which is exactly what we need. So yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. no, I was, it was an utter pleasure. Anything else I can answer? Um, I'll, um, I, I've, I think I'm all out of questions on the spot. There. I mean, it's 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 so it's. I mean, it's as you say, it's a kind of thing that you kind of it sits and you sort of think, what about this and what about that, and you have got to keep going for it. But I certainly can definitely, I, yeah. Sorry, go. Can I can I throw one more thing then? Yeah, uh, sure, if, sure. If you want, if you want something to rattle around people's head, because people say, you know, if I have to introduce this to somebody as a new topic, what do I throw them at? It's like, yeah, fine. You want to mention the Truman Show? That's one thing. But if you want something physical, they can actually look themselves, ask them this, say, fine. You think you live on the globe? Go online, any search engine, doesn't really matter, and find me two pictures of the Earth from space. Because I know you'll find one, but why is there only one? Mm-hmm. And, okay. you know, and you got to ask yourself, why Why would you hide that? And you'd only hide it because it's not what you think it is. Yeah, I'd, 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 I'd always encourage everyone to just always ask questions, even if, it's, yeah. even if you think it's wacky, even whatever. It's not yeah. the end of the world if you get something wrong anyway. If someone believes something and then finds out it's not true or, or, or vice versa, it doesn't yeah. make you an idiot. It doesn't, you know, it's, I think it's bit really healthy being open mind anyway. So that's that's my opinion. And it it has been fascinating um hearing hearing all your research, Mark. And it'd be great if you could come back on the show at some point and um oh, tell yeah. us tell us some more if you've got any more research on it and, well, and so on. Love 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 to. Yeah. There's tests being done done as we speak. Uh laser tests in the works by uh oh, excellent. Some, Yeah and uh we're at this point we're going after the small stuff like the curvature of the earth. That'll be fun. Brilliant. Okay, well thanks again and um we'll be hopefully speaking soon. Mark Sargent, what did you think of that, Shona? I think that was absolutely amazing. I love the flat earth and enclosed earth theory. I think that 
it'll definitely give our listeners something to think about for a little while. So yeah, it's thought provoking, thought provoking. As I said, it's all, you know all this stuff. It's healthy. You know, you can take or leave it. But I think it's it's all healthy brain exercising. You know, just sort of challenge yourself of what what could be real and what could not be real. You know. Hey, that's what we're about: free yeah. thoughts and open minds. Exactly, so. exactly. And this was your first show, so everyone Yay. give her a round of applause. <laughs> uh, no, um, it was it's, it's it was a uh, really enjoyable doing it with you. And um, we'll be back again soon. I do. I do actually think our next show is going to actually have we're going to have David Parry back, and we've got the 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 the, the leader of the UK Libertarian Party coming on the show, and that's very much David's um, David's gig. He got that on board, so I'm looking forward to that one. And um, and then um, we'll be cooking up one together very soon as well, won't we, Shana? Most definitely. Okay. Well, as usual, we have got some cool names coming up in the pipeline, so keep your ear to the ground. Um, but that's it for this week we've um, really enjoyed ourselves again and we hope you have please keep telling your friends about the show linking the show and if you're feeling really generous pop to our website and send us a small donation to help us keep developing the show and keeping at it um, but until next time I think uh, we're going to go now grab some grab a bite and uh, we'll be seeing you soon bye take care